Let me ask you something. How big is your machine? No matter how big your machine is, you probably want a larger one. Besides buying a Swedish made machine and larger, what are your options to make objects that are bigger than the bed of your current machine? Tiling is the answer. It's recently been added to Carbide Create. I'll give you the core principles of setting up tiling first in the software, then here at the machine. Class is in session in the Carbide Studio. Carbide Create continues to add features at no extra charge. Tiling is the latest to join Create Pro. If you own a Shapeo Go 3, 4, or 5, you now have unlimited wide capacity. If you can find a 196 inch sheet of plywood, you can index it through your Shapeo Go. A warning, this could seriously affect your shop setup. A 90 degree machine turn probably wasn't in the plan. It's definitely worth it to utilize tiling. Computer work is first, off to the office we go. In Carbide Create, draw your entire design, head to Toolpathing, create all of your toolpaths as you would for any other design. Next, go ahead and check Toolpath Tiling. You'll see a current tile and you'll see a setup. You'll find three values, tile height, vertical overlap, and X margin. Make the tile size just larger than what is needed to capture your design and smaller than your machine maximum travel when you include the overlap. The overlap is there to ensure that each tile in your design connects. It doesn't need to be a large amount. I ended up settling on six millimeters. Next, you'll set your X margin to connect horizontal panels. Massive multi-panel displays are now possible on any size shape Oco. A quick look at the simulation shows that I'm cutting the bottom half of my Formula One car and all the way through my stock. By selecting my second tile and going back to simulation, you can see that this tile cuts just the top half of the car. Toolpaths are automatically clipped or defined as empty based on the tile selected, simplifying the process. It's time for a critical information warning. Throughout the tiling procedure, your origin will remain the same. You will never change your zero point, you'll just move the stock. All right, we're done with the design. Let's get down and make something. Back here at the machine, we're about to get started and load some stock in. Two things you're gonna need before you load stock onto your Shape Oco. One, an outfeed table for support of the long sheets, especially if you're doing a four by eight sheet of plywood, you don't want that thing sagging out of the machine. Get yourself a table that can be positioned at the back of the machine or at the front of the machine, depending upon the tile that you're cutting. Additionally, you're going to need an X guide. I cut these on the Shape Oco, made them out of one inch hard maple and positioned them in the outside left side of our machine. There's a lot of extra real estate on the new Shape Oco 5, utilize it. Once installed, I utilized a quarter inch bit to face both of my one inch maple guides. This ensures they are 100% square to the setup. That will definitely help with your tiling operation. With those guides installed, you now have a known X value. Be sure and put in your notes where you cut that. Utilize the machine position. For instance, I know mine is at 1234 from zero. If I wrap it over to 1234 on X, I am right against that fence. Not only useful for this project, but useful throughout every project when you want to get something that is absolutely square to your machine. This is where better plywood will benefit you. The work holding is going to be a little bit tricky. The bigger the stock and the design, the more creative you'll have to be. Make some work holding holes in your design if you can. Across the four foot section of plywood, you probably will need a couple of hold downs to be sure that your plywood is staying flat against the bed. You want to capture the edges with clamps and add clamps as you cut if you can. You want to hold the middle of the sheet, especially if you're pocketing. The permutations are 10 to the power of a thousand here. It's gonna be an adventure. That's what CNC is. 47 inches from the top of the stock. That is my Y zero position. If you really wanna get exact, use a mechanical pencil and a V bit to set that Y zero position. You already know your X zero, 1234 for me, is right up against those hard maple guides. Z, top of the stock. And with that, you can run your first tile. If you want to experiment here, you don't want to go to a giant piece of stock, utilize tiling with something far smaller. Make yourself a one foot by two foot test file, make two tiles out of it, and test an MDF. That's the cheapest way to go about it. With your first tile run successfully, on to tile two. I used a clamp to mark the top of the sheet of plywood. Sliding your stock, you want your original pencil mark to meet the location of the clamp or mark you made where the top of your stock was previously located. Make sure your stock is right along the guides. Your work holding is on point once again. Remember, some designs are tricky, some designs are easier. 
It's time to bury your inner NASA engineer. I don't think it's a good idea for us to hang out again. You're making a giant object. Even if you're off by as much as an eighth of an inch in the middle of an eight foot piece of art, no one will see it. No one, except you. That's it. With that run tile too, you're gonna notice that it will recut some area into your previous tile. That's what it's supposed to do. That's the overlap. And you'll get a feel for just how accurate your work holding and your positioning are when you see those overlaps. Does it recut more space? Does it go ahead and recut exactly the features that you had there? Now go do it. Discover your work holding, your workflow, and make your first monster build. Information, ideas, and inspiration from Carbide 3D.